Howdy, howdy, friends. How are you doing? I am very excited to be recording uh, content again. You know, this is not a video from a live stream. This is not a live stream itself. This is original content that I am recording as the day goes. And as you know, I have my Union Jack shirt, so it's time to talk about the UK. But before we do that, uh, please, if you can take the moment for not only uh, subscribing to the channel and liking the video, but checking my links in the description, I would very, very much appreciate it. That's a way to support the channel uh, directly or indirectly. So I would really appreciate if you did that. And without further ado, let's go back to check the British-American War, also known as the War of 1812, at least in America. So let's see. So the War of 1812, I, I do know a little bit about this war. I think it had something to do, maybe, I think, I may be wrong, but about like the U.S. wanting to expand either north or west, I don't know. Uh, uh, of course, the British famously uh, burned the White House, so that was a pretty uh, famous phenomenon, I think, coming from this war. Uh, was it, a, I don't know, the, the thing that I don't know is who won? I mean, I guess you could say the, the U.S. won. I think I've heard it was more of a draw. And why did the British didn't win? I think that's what I want to know because the U.S. was a pretty young nation. It's not the United States we know right now. Uh, it was a very young nation, very unexperienced nation. And the U.K. was still pretty powerful. And so why did the war stop? Why did the British stop or couldn't win? I want to know that. So let's, hey, without further ado, let's just watch, bro. In 1812, the young nation of the United States took on the country with the most powerful navy in the world in a war that would affect more than just the former colonies oh, yeah. and their colonizer. The United States of America first gained freedom from the British in an eight-year-long revolutionary war that finally came to a close oh. when Britain inevitably recognized the independence of their 13 former colonies on September 3rd, Gaining a lot of territory. One of the most relevant impacts of this war that would fuel future... So the U.S. would win all this territory as well. Uh, I think maybe uh, from this side of the Mississippi... Is this the Mississippi River? I think it is, right? Uh, and they would eventually also buy Louisiana from France around this time, maybe a few years earlier. Her tensions between the U.S. and Britain once again this. was the role of the Native Americans. And as a fan of our channel, you should check out our friends. Over well, uh, check Curiosity Stream. You know, it's nice. Uh, and yeah, America would have the American stream. Indian Wars. This is my personal favorite that stream. Some of them would, a place would where last I can watch a really long time. Of incredibly well story, but the rival American War of Nations and the details of the war are important. The 75% yearly subscription from the U.S. settlers into Native American territory. When Britain failed to maintain its rule over the colonies, the United States eventually accelerated its takeover of Native land, causing even more friction between the American societies. I friction, think that the British had good relationship, the years re relationships on, with the, the natives. remained a driving force of the discord since not only had the natives taken its side in the revolution, but the British also openly encouraged the Native Americans to fight back against their antagonists. By 1812, this, combined with a few other factors, led to the development of a new war. While the United States was clearly unhappy with the united opposition from Britain and the natives, they were also infuriated by allegations that the Royal Navy was utilizing a tactic known as impressment to take U.S. men for their own troops. On top of this, the ongoing strife between Britain and France had a notable impact on oh, the United States. Heavily course. locked in their own struggle, the warring nations tried to restore so I'm guessing for the time, I don't know where which year we are, but we are either close to the Napoleonic Wars or in the Napoleonic Wars. And of course, that's going to be uh, a, a huge factor for this war. Strict I'm guessing. I don't know. Neutral countries and because 1812, when was the Battle of Waterloo? Uh, maybe even Napoleon already lost by the time 1812 came around. Anyone who attempted to ignore the constraints, this 
put the United States in a detrimental position due to their inability to continue trade with either nation unless they wanted to risk invoking the wrath of the other side. While France took a more laid-back approach to ensure the US abstained from doing business with the British, the latter was more aggressive about the matter. On January 7th, 1807, Britain issued Funny. an order in council stating, It is hereby ordered that no vessel shall be permitted to trade from one port to another, both which ports shall belong to or be in the possession of France or her allies, or shall be so far under their control as the British vessels may not freely trade. Furthermore, any ships that refused to obey these restrictions would be subject to seizure by the Royal Navy, cargo and all. By November, the original order was expanded, now to include all the ports and places of France and her allies, or of any other country at war with His Majesty, and all other ports or places in Europe, from which, although not at war with His Majesty, the British flag is excluded, and all ports or places in the colonies belonging so to His Majesty's enemies. There, Jesus in Christ. retaliation, France, under the command of Napoleon Bonaparte, issued the Milan Decree, which said that every ship to whatever nation it may belong that shall have submitted to be searched by an English ship or to a voyage to England or shall have paid any tax whatsoever to the English, the English government, government is thereby and for that alone declared to be denationalized to have forfeited the protection of its king and to have become English property. Adding on, Napoleon declared that any of the aforementioned ships that enter French ports or those of French allies are good and lawful prizes of his nation. Forced huh. to reply, U.S. President Thomas Jefferson signed the Embargo Act in December of 1807, blocking all international trade from American ports and taking direct aim at Britain. Unfortunately for America, the act backfired and turned the U.S. into more of a victim than anyone else. Emphasizing this point, the Minister to France himself even said, Here it is not felt, and in England it is forgotten. The effects of the Embargo Act ultimately pushed the U.S. into an economic depression, and it had to be repealed less than two years after the initial signature. In its place, the non- As we are living right now with this current situation of the planet, uh, embargoes and, and now, well, now it's about sanctions and all that are very complicated. Intercourse Act Complicated was to passed, run. which directly forbade trade with Britain and France Imagine and that. their colonies. Imagine what being a young United States and not being able to trade with probably at this time two of the two closest trade partners you have. Very difficult situation. When this new act still proved to be ineffective, the United States tried once again, this time passing Macon's Bill No. 2 in May of 1810. This bill lifted trading bans and stated that if either France or Britain removed their own restrictions, the U.S. would re-establish an embargo with the opposing nation. Huh. By August, Napoleon okay. enacted a plan to exacerbate tension between Britain and the United States, and it ultimately worked. He first told the new president, James Madison, that he intended to exempt the U.S. from his previously established Berlin and Milan decrees, promoting Madison to bring back the Non-Intercourse Act. So I have a video that I did on oversimplified uh, Napoleonic Wars, so you can go check that out. And we'll learn a lot about Napoleon, which he's definitely one of the most interesting men in history. And yeah, he would, he would use not only war... But also uh, tactics like this, diplomatical tactics, establishing sister republics uh, across Europe. Uh, the, the the famous uh, trade, how, how did he call it? Well, basically blockading tr uh, British trade on continental Europe. So definitely a very smart man who used trade and diplomatic uh, things to, to his advantage. Restraints against Britain in November of that year, despite the fact that Napoleon never actually followed through on his hmm. proclamation. Britain okay. and the United States were now on the brink of all-out war.
The final straw came when the Battle of Tippecanoe unfolded in late 1811, as the U.S. troops claimed victory over the Native Americans, wishing to stop further expansion once again. Given the United States was fairly confident in the belief that the British were supplying the natives with weapons from Canada, a faction of oh the U.S. Boy. Republican Party known as the Warhawks began a heavy push towards an official declaration of war. At last, on June 18, 1812, President James Madison signed the Declaration Against Britain, despite contention about the issue coming from both the House and Senate. Another problem emerged as well when Britain decided to suddenly repeal their trade restrictions before news of the U.S. declaration of war actually reached the British over a month later. Aware of this delay, Britain decided not to immediately respond to the call of war and waited to see how the Americans would react to their repeals. When the U.S. got wind of this surprising development, they were, in turn, unsure of how the Brits would react to their declaration of war. Ultimately, the United... <laughs> So that's pretty funny. Well, I mean, probably not funny for the people living it. But hey, so basically, uh, my message took a long time to be sent, so I'm, I'm going to wait. And then on the other side, the US, my message took a long time to be sent, so I'm just going to wait and see how, did they, how they react. Funny, funny, pretty... Uh, yeah, just a complicated situation when it came to communications at that time. United States decided to follow through on its proclamation and did so by invading Canada, which was a British colony at the time. While the American troops hoped to capture Canadian land to force Britain into negotiation, they had no such success. No one was prepared for war. The British and French had been busy fighting their own battles, and the U.S. military was grossly ill-suited to take on the likes of Britain. The defeats were plenty and humiliating for the Americans. One excessively humbling loss for the U.S. happened when General William Hull surrendered Fort Detroit on August 16, 1812, huh. and his own army to the British troops, and allowed Michigan territory to be deemed as part of Britain. Chased wow. across the Canadian border, as Hull saw the size of his opponent's forces, which was a mix of British and Native American troops, and knowing that his daughter and grandchild were in the fort, he decided to give up without a single shot being fired. Hull's disgraceful failure led to an uptick in Native American raids in the Northwest and British conflict under the command of Major General Henry Proctor. Adding insult to injury, U.S. Brigadier General Henry Dearborn struggled to make any progress on the northeastern border because the militias in New England were not supportive of the war and uninterested in coming together for an attack on Montreal. By October, the Americans were finally able to get some momentum as Major let, Generals... Let, let me guess if, if I have this straight. Because of the Napoleonic Wars, uh, both Britain and France were uh, st establishing a lot of uh, sanctions uh, to trade. Because, well, trading with another nation was, I guess, considered an act of war. So the U.S. couldn't trade with some of its biggest uh, partners. However, France uh, was kind of teasing America into uh, uh, lifting those uh, sanctions or prohibitions uh, about trade. Uh, Britain would actually do it, but the United States would be tired of it. Plus, the U.S. T uh, thought that the natives uh, uh, were being aided by Britain. So uh, combining those two factors, they went to war. Uh, kind of a, I wouldn't say dumb war, but... <sighs> Probably not a very smart one either. Stephen von Rensselaer led an army of 3,100 militiamen into the Battle of Queenston Heights. Rensselaer sent some advanced units across the river where they were able to hold their ground for some time on a slope just above Queenston and were successful until they were overcome by British forces as the rest of the American troops refused to join the fight. 925 U.S. soldiers were then captured by the British despite Major General Isaac Brock on the British side being killed during the battle. Huh. Yet again, the Americans that? took another hit in 1813 when an attempt to retake Detroit resulted in a massacre of U.S. prisoners by their Native American opponents. On top of that, Brigadier General Henry Dearborn was replaced by Major General James Wilkins. 
At long last, though, in September of 1813, U.S. Commodore Oliver Hazard Perry scored a major naval victory at Lake Erie against the forces of British Captain Robert Barclay. Okay, so Open America at least had this one to talk on the about. American side. When the Battle of the Thames erupted the following month, the U.S. finally defeated the British and Native American Allied forces. Huh. The next spring season, at the Battle of Horseshoe Bend, a U.S. militia force faced off with a Native American force known as the Red Sticks and found victory once again, demanding that the losing side so. cede roughly 23 million acres of land, which would later become Alabama and span partially into Georgia. Another win for the United States followed in the summer, July of 1814. Okay, so America gaining momentum, America winning some battles. As the Battle of Lundy's Lane ended in a bloody stalemate shortly after, forcing the Americans to withdraw. The mm. real deciding factor in the war came when Napoleon faced his first exile, allowing Britain to, to shift focus, more focus yeah. to the discord with the United States. The British sliced through the U.S., destroying government buildings, including the White House, as they took mm. control of Washington, D.C. The Brits then tried to push farther into Baltimore by September under the authority of General Robert Ross, but were repulsed at the Battle of North Point, where General Ross was killed. In the battle that inspired the U.S. national anthem, more British troops were fought off at Fort McHenry. As these conflicts raged on, peace talks began in Ghent and eventually resulted in a signed treaty on December 24th, 1814. And Still, in Belgium. just as with the declaration of war, the news was delayed and took until February 18th, 1815. God to damn it, where all those the new. Uh, and ends the war. Late the news. Treaty of Ghent reverted things back mostly the to late how news. they were before the combat with a status quo antebellum. All territory was returned. Britain repealed their trade restrictions, stopped supporting the Native American revolts, and ended their impressment strategies. In the end, the war was essentially a draw, and the only real losing side was the Native Americans, who had high hopes for British help in stopping U.S. expansion. Britain was able to claim victory against the French, and in a way, against the U.S. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. the U.S. had the pride of more or less winning. So what do you, what do you think, okay? Uh, if you had to pick uh, which side won, what would you say? I would, I would like to see some debates between the Americans and the British in the comments, but maybe Second they agree, I don't know. Of independence. Definitely a very interesting video that allowed me to learn more about this war that was definitely a big unknown for me when it comes to American history. I know a lot more about other wars, uh, but not about this one. So I'm really glad that I learned about this war, uh, which is definitely... It wasn't a very useful war, although the Americans got that the British uh, stopped supporting the Native Americans and would eventually crush them in later wars, um, sadly. Uh, but it wasn't a, a very useful war for either country. You know, Britain just lost more men and time fighting the Americans that could be used better. Uh, and yeah, nobody won, I think, in reality. If you ask me, it wasn't a war with a winner. But who knows? Uh, what do you think about the comments? Let me know. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate that. And I'll see you on the next video.